Today's message will come from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6. 2 Kings, chapter 6. I'll be reading to you verses 1 through 7. 2 through 7. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and be answered. Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was fell in a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. I took our text this morning from verse 5, But as one was fell in a beam, the axe fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. This morning I want to talk a little while and use for a subject, getting back what you loan now. Getting back what you loan now. A very personal message this morning as well as a spiritual message this morning, getting back what you have loaned now. This morning I want to speak briefly about that. And before I continue on God's message today, I want to ask a few questions this morning. Have you ever loaned out anything? Because I want you to really relate to this message today. And in order to relate to God's message today, you have to really answer a few questions. I got three questions today. And it is, have you ever loaned out anything? I'm going to give you a little time to think because some of us know right away that we have. And some may have to think about it. Some may have to go a long ways back. Because we all are different in one way or another. Just spend some time asking yourself the question, have I ever loaned out anything? Then proceed to the next question. Just some thoughts to go with our sermon text today. Just some thoughts, not trying to get anything started, but just some sermon text, some thoughts to go with our sermon text today. After you ask your question, have you asked yourself the question, have you loaned out anything? Then you want to ask yourself the question, what have you loaned out? What have you loaned now? Well, that's very, very touchy. That's some eye openers this morning. You know, have you ever loaned out anything? And, and if you have, just in case you have, now come the question, what have you loaned out? Again, take, we're going to take some time. Some may an answer right away. Some may need a little time to think about it. And some may need a while to think about it. And then finally, ask yourself this question. Did you get it back? <laughs> Did you get it back? I want to think that we all have loaned out things in our life. And three questions, have you loaned out anything? What have you loaned out? And then, did you get it back? And I also have to be careful because, you know, I say we all have loaned out things. But there are some people that have come to a conclusion in their mind that they simply will loan out, don't want to loan out anything. But according to God's word today, we, have, we all have loaned out in one way or another. What I'm asking today in a material thing, in a world that you live in, have you loaned out anything? What have you loaned out? And then did you get it back? This is mine. I've worked, you know, a lot of times people won't loan out because they say, this is mine. This is mine. I'm not loaning, I'm not lending no anyone. I worked hard for it. I'm not loaning out anything. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I know I got it. I got it. I got a lot of them. But I can't help you. I got a lot of it in my pocket, but I can't help you. I'm not loaning out. They come up with a set mind that they're not going to loan out regardless what happened. Then there are those that used to loan out, but have stopped loaning out. They have stopped loaning out because perhaps it wasn't returned. Perhaps they have stopped loaning out because what they loan out wasn't returned back. That sounds familiar. It sounds familiar to me. Certainly I open up to me. And, and through that, them not returning those items back, they have come to conclusion that they will punish everybody because somebody didn't return back what they had borrowed. 
let me just say that again there's some that won't loan anything because they have come to a conclusion to punish everybody because somebody didn't return back what they had borrowed very strong statement I just said that this morning this morning I hope I don't get anything negative started with anyone because that's not my intention to get anything negative you know sometimes you can think about what you loan and and then the preacher talked about uh, what you loan now you know and, and when it comes time to life a lot of times we don't loan out valuable we don't loan out things that has a, that's expensive but today we're gonna find out perhaps you have perhaps you have unknowingly perhaps you have unwillingly but I found out today that some have come to a conclusion to punish everybody because somebody didn't return back what they had borrowed. This morning and bringing back memories of what somebody didn't return back, this is God's message to you and me about getting back what we have loaned out. This is God's message to us today. Then I asked the question earlier, I asked that third question, which probably the most vital question of all, did you get it back? Are you still waiting on it? And again, I hope I don't get anything started, because it's easy to get things started when you ask this question. You know what, I remember I loaned so-and-so this. You're right, I remember I loaned her that, I loaned them that, I loaned my son this, I loaned my wife. You get to thinking about those things that you loaned out. Don't want to get anything started. But in our life, I know in my life I have loaned out many things in helping people. I've loaned out things from tools to money to cars to clothes and shoes, rod and reels, chairs, tables, canopies, umbrellas, fans, food, etc. And the list goes on and on and on. Because I like to consider myself a helpful person. I know that I have loaned out. I know that I have helped and I've listed and, and it's a blessing to be able to help others. Don't get it wrong here. It's a blessing to be able to help others. Yes, I have loaned out many times. I've shared with you some of the items that I have loaned out. Yes, I've loaned. That was the first question. What have you loaned out? I shared with you some of the things that I've loaned out just to list a few. And then the third question still have me puzzled and may still have some of you puzzled. They even have me puzzled throughout this message this morning. Did I get it back? Why is this so hard of a question? I know I loaned it out. I can't remember exactly when. I can't remember what I loaned out, but I know that I have loaned it out. But the problem occurs when the person I have loaned it out to have had it so long that I have forgotten who I loaned it out to. Now I'm getting mad. Oh no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But listen to what I just said. The problem occurs when the person I have loaned it out to have had it so long that I have forgotten who I have loaned it out to. Sounds familiar? Am I the only one? This is an honest truth. In helping someone out, we've loaned out our personal items. We've loaned out our personal tools. We've loaned out things that we have purchased of our own. We have loaned them out for so long we don't even know who we have loaned them out to. And with that being said, I want you to do some inventory in your life. Like I told y'all, I don't want to get anything started, but I need to try to fix this just in case I started something this morning by reminding somebody about somebody that borrowed something from them didn't return it back perhaps i got something started about somebody that yeah you just wait this service over and i'm going back and i remember now and just in case i started something this morning i i want to try to fix this this morning and uh perhaps that i encourage you today and, and in fixing this i i want to make sure that i'm careful with this and fixing this i i want to encourage you today to look on your shelf I want to encourage you to look in your closet. I want to encourage you to look in your garage. Look through your tools. Look at your fishing equipment and see if you have anything in your inventory that you don't remember buying. Look in your inventory and see if you have something there that you that you don't remember paying for or remember somebody giving it to you and, and find yourself saying, you know what, I don't remember where I got this from. Do a little inventory on your own life. Perhaps it's a borrowed item and you had it so long 
you forgot who you borrowed it from. I'm trying to fix this this morning. See, it works both ways. You know, we can loan out so for so long we forget who we borrowed from, and, and if we're not careful, we can borrow something. We can have it in our inventory, have it in our closet, have it in our garage, in our home. For so long, we forget who we borrowed it from. Church, I say that to say this about our sermon text today. Getting back what you have loaned out. Notice I didn't say getting back what you have gave away. I didn't say get back what somebody has stolen from you. But our message clearly states getting back what you have loaned out. See, when you loan somebody something, you are entitled to get it back. When you loan somebody something, you expect them to give it back. When you loan somebody something, you expect to see it again. You expect to have it back in your possession. This morning, God is talking about what have you loaned out in your spiritual life. God is talking about your spiritual life today. What have we loaned out in the world today? Because we have to understand, if we don't know what we loaned out in our earthly life, we don't know what we loaned out in our material life, how do you know what you've loaned out in your spiritual life? Very strong message this morning. Do you know what you have loaned now spiritually? Yeah, I know a lot of people, Galatians 6, uh, 6 through 10, tell us what we should have spiritually. Tell us what God provides for us, what God gives us through the Holy Spirit and all the fruit of the Spirit. Do you know what you have loaned now spiritually? And finally, finally, do you want it back? Do you want it back? We sing that song, this love that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. This joy, this peace, all those things, the world didn't give it. They didn't tell me that we need those things back in our life. In times like these, looking at what's so much, is, looking at what's going on in our school, in our community, in the world, in state to state, country to country, in times like this, we need to make sure that we've loaned out anything spiritually, we need to get it back. Finally, do you want it back? Do you want back what you've lost spiritually? In the world we live in today, people are so focused on doing me. So focused on doing me and myself. Me and myself, it's all about me. They're so focused on themselves. So focused on their, on their families. So focused on their inner circle. So focused on the, the problems that they have overlooked, overlooked and forgot about their blessings. So we have to be careful about that. We can be so caught up in the things that's going on in the world. We can be caught up in so much that's going on around us and in us and through us and all about that we can become so over caught up in that that we overlook our blessing. We can be so caught up in the things of the world they have forgotten about the light of the world. Look at the things going on today. More and more people are talking about the price of, of gas than the price that Jesus paid on the cross. More and more people talking about the price of inflation. You can go anywhere. People talking about what have increased, what has gone up. They'll tell you everything that have escalated except Jesus Christ. They're so caught up in the things of the world, they have forgotten about the light of the world. We have to realize and understand no matter what goes on in this life, in our world, Jesus is still our biggest factor. It's all about Jesus. And doing so, getting caught up in the world, they have allowed themselves to loan out without even knowing it. Listen, let me say that again. And keeping up in, with all the things that's going on in the world, keeping up with satisfying you, yourself and being about all about me and all about I and all about my family in that closed circle, they have forgotten it and forgetting about the light of the world. And doing so, they have allowed themselves to loan out without even knowing it what they are missing in the walks of life. A lot of them are walking the walk and don't even know what they are missing in their spiritual life. They have become so entangled with people and entangled with problems and circumstances of the world, they have loaned out their fruit of the Spirit. So many of God's children have become so entangled with people, with the problems in the world and with circumstances of the world, that they have loaned out their fruit of the Spirit without even recognizing somebody today say you know what i haven't given my love and i haven't given my peace out i haven't given my joy out as i said they have loaned out their fruit of the spirit without even recognizing it without even recognizing themselves but i hope i'm not the only one who have said this or have heard these words but have you ever said or heard someone say they really act different 
I don't know who they're talking about. It's not important who they're talking about today, but have they really act different? Have you said or perhaps heard someone say they really have changed? They seem like they are, 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 are mad at the world. All these things. Uh, have you ever noticed that people can have such an impact upon themselves where others can see it? And it impact can be so strong that you see them that you go the other way. Have you ever noticed they can have a, such an impact on themselves you begin to wonder if everything is okay in their life? You begin to say, I'm going to pray harder for them because I can look and see that something's not right. As I said earlier, that they have allowed, they have allowed themselves to, to give, to allow themselves to give a loan without even noticing it. They change their ways. They've changed the way they act. Seem like everything about them is different. All their friendliness, their kindness has gone away. The answer can be simply because they have loaned out their fruit of the Spirit. If we see changes in us, we see changes in our loved ones, in our family. We see changes in those strangers and enemies, those around us, those that we work with, those that we uh, associate with. If we see those changes, perhaps those changes are because they have loaned out their fruit of the Spirit. Perhaps you or someone in the family, a friend, a stranger, a neighbor, or someone you know is exhibiting this type of behavior. They've changed. They don't act the same. They're not like they used to be. If so, we can be uplifted today knowing you can get back what you loaned out. You may not even know you loaned it out. But the good news today is you can get back what you have loaned out. The key word today is loan. Meaning loan, you're able to get it back. Perhaps you have loaned out your forgiveness. Perhaps you have loaned out your forgiveness and don't know how to forgive anymore. Perhaps you have loaned out that smile and you don't know how to laugh anymore. Perhaps you have loaned out that love in your life and you don't know how to love everybody. Perhaps you have loaned out that peace in your life and can't find peace within yourself or with others. Perhaps you have loaned out that smile. Perhaps that love is gone. Good news is available to you today through this message. Getting back what you loaned out. Perhaps you have loaned out your grace and mercy in your life and forgotten how to get it back. If it's anything we need today, is love. We need grace. We need mercy. We need forgiveness. If anything we need today, it is the fruit of the Spirit. Perhaps you have loaned out love in your life and forgotten how to love everybody. If it's anything we need today in our life in the midst of so much going on in the world, in the book of James say that we need to have joy. If it's anything we need right now, we need to have joy. Where is those joyful Christians out today? This day, God is doing an own call for all those that have loaned out their joy to get back what you have loaned out. He's done an own call, all that you have loaned out. Today is a day for you to do an own call and get back what you have loaned out. My wife's favorite book is found in the book of James. James say in times like these, we ought to count it all joy. Perhaps you have loaned out your joy. You don't smile like you used to. You don't laugh like you used to. You don't show that you're happy like you used to. You're not jolly like you used to be. You need to know today that God wants you to recover everything spiritually that you have loaned out. God wants you to recover everything spiritually that you have loaned out. God wants to see you smile again. My wife used to say it all the time. God going to make you laugh again. God going to make you smile again. God wants to see you. God wants to see me smile again. God wants to see us love again. Love ye everybody. As Christ Jesus has loved ye. God wants to see us forgiven. God wants to see us rejoicing again. God wants to see us loving one another. God wants to see us at peace with each other. Peace within ourselves. In this sermon today, God wants you to get back what you have loaned. 
meaning God wants you to receive, get back everything that Jesus paid for on the cross. Oh, that's good news right there. God, isn't that good news? It's a blessing to all of us today. God wants us to receive. God wants us to get back everything that Jesus paid for on the cross. He wants you to get it back. The question is today, what are you missing? Today I want you to think about it. Think upon yourself. Do your self-examination. Who know ye better than yourself? You know, you don't need someone to say, Oh, you have changed. Oh, you're different. That, examine yourself and see what you are missing. And then when you see what you are missing, remember what I just said today. Most important, last part of our text today. God wants us to receive everything that Jesus paid for on the cross. God wants us to get back everything that his son paid for on the cross. Just know when we get back those spiritual things in our life, Isaiah 43 and 19 say this, when you have a made up mind that you are ready to get back those things that you have loaned out willingly as well as unwillingly. Isaiah 43 and 19 says, God said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Oh man, if any time we need God to do some new things in our life, it's times like this. In a world like this, he said, Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth, and ye shall know it. You're going to know when God, what God is doing in your life. He said, It shall spring forth, and if it spring forth, you will know it. And if you know it, others will know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and river in the desert, desert for my children to get back what they have loaned now. What a mighty good God we serve. He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for those which are lost, those which are on the wrong path, those which are going the wrong way. He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for his children to get back what they have loaned now. Like our sermon text today, in cutting down the tree, the prophet lost his axe. Summarizing, I'm closing right now. But in summarizing our sermon text today, and I want you to read that whole chapter, but in summarizing it today, in cutting down the tree, the, pro the uh, prophet lost his axe head when it fell, when it fell off into the Jordan River. And y'all know the Jordan River. The Jordan River was muddy. The Jordan River was wide. The Jordan River was deep. He dropped off that axe head, making it seem almost to be impossible. But we know that all things are possible through our Lord and Savior. He dropped it, it fell into the Jordan River. Upon losing the axe head, he became hysterical. He became frantic. Why did he get all worked up about an axe head? Why did he get all so worked up about an axe head? We read in our sermon text today. It goes with our sermon text. We read in the text today. He got worked up because the axe was borrowed. Because the axe was borrowed. Someone had loaned him the axe. It wasn't his axe. It was a borrowed axe. The prophet called out to the man of God. Look what he did. Once he noticed that he had lost it, the axe had came off. Once he seen it, he called out to the man of God. And he asked the prophet. The, well, he called unto the man of God. The man of God asked the prophet, where did it fall? He showed him. And he, after showing him, the man of God cut off a stick, threw it into the water, and the axe head did swim, meaning that the axe head floated to the top. The prophet said something very important in verse 7. After the axe head floated to the top, he said unto the prophet, Take it up to thee. And the prophet obeyed, putting out his hand and picking up the borrowed axe. The moral to this story was he recognized he had lost the power to continue when he lost the axe head. They were doing a great job. And in the midst, every man had his own being. And I can imagine he was just cutting away, preparing a way for them to dwell, preparing a place for them to live. Everybody had their own axe, I mean, had the axe, had their own tree. But the axe he had was a borrowed axe. He was going away, and as he lost his axe, he immediately lost his power. After losing his power, he remembered that he what that it was a barn item. What do you mean a loss of power? Just to make sure there was no more cutting that he could do because there was no axe head. Lost his power. But he immediately, not later, but he immediately remembered 
that it was a borrowed eye. Third, he knew exactly where the axe head had fell off. It was deep. It was muddy. It was a joint river. But he knew exactly where the axe head had come off. And for it, he immediately called out to the man of God. Had he waited three days, had he waited three weeks, three months, he may be like some of us today, forgotten where it had been so long that he forgotten where it had fallen off. Had been so long, he may have forgotten who he had borrowed it from. He, but in the lesson today in closing, he had three C's in his life. And it reminds me of myself, I have two C's, Carl Conwell. But he had three C's in his life in closing today. The first C, he had concern. He had concern that he had lost the axe. Then, uh, that it was a borrowed axe. Then the second thing, second C, he had a confession. He confessed that he had, the axe had come off. He confessed that it come off. And then the third C, he had a comeback. He was able to come back to the place. He knew exactly where the axe head had failed. And closing today, church, I know that's three times, but I'm closing. And closing today, we have to follow the pattern of God to get back what we have loaned out. We have to follow the three, we have to have the three C's in our life. We have to be concerned that we have lost our power. We have to be concerned and, and know that, second, we have to confess that we are not what we used to be. We are not, don't act like we used to act. We don't love like we used to love. We don't forgive. We don't have that joy like we used to have. We're not like we used to be. And then the third thing involves coming back. Before the ax head could be recovered, he had to come back to where he lost his power. Today, church, you have to come back to that spiritual arena. You have to come back to that place where, that, where your power was coming from. You have to come back to Jesus because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right where you left him at, right, I'm sorry, right where you departed from him at, right where you stepped away from him yet, right from where you ran off from where yet, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're going to have to have some comeback in your life. You're going to have to be concerned about the life that you live. You're going to have to confess that you have sinned. You have to confess that you've been out in the world. You have to confess that you turned against God. You have to confess that you have made some bad choices in life. You have to confess that you have always been following Christ. And then you have to have that comeback. You have to be, coming, be willing to come back. Come back to that spiritual arena. Come back to that place where all power is in His hand. Come back to that one that can direct your step. Come back to the one that was leading you down the path of righteousness. Come back to that path to that one that can keep you on the straight and narrow. Come back. Get back what you have loaned out. I pray and trust that God's message have been a uplifting to you today. I pray and trust that God's message have been an eye opener to you. Not to go back and get your material things. Not to go back to get those things that you, you think you loaned them from or where you think they might be at now that I brought it to your attention. But to go back and get those spiritual things. Those spiritual things that joy, that love, that peace, that forgiveness, that long suffering, that patience, that fruit of the Spirit. We, we, you know, we lose things every now and then. I lose my keys all the time. And sometimes they're right where I left, right, most of the time they're right where I left them at. I can't find them. My wife will point them out. There they are. And it's just like that prophet, told, the man of God told him, he said, the rate of axe head began to swim. And he said, now I want you. Yeah, it's on the top. He could have easily got it. He said, no, I'm not. He said, now I want you to take up the axe and bring it to you. Today God is telling you to take up the cross. God wants everything that his son paid for on the cross. There was there was you I was there, you was there, and included was that grace and mercy, love, peace, joy, humbleness, all those good things. But somewhere down the way you made a loan it out. Intentionally. Maybe unintentionally. But today is the day to get back what you have loaned out so it can make a difference in your life and the lives of others. May God bless you this hour. God bless you.